There he is, Buster. Coming out the top of the roof. He is adorned for Valentine's Day, which is right around the corner, kind of right around the corner. Speaking around the corner, from him is the Hollywood Museum, which is where I'm heading today for a special exhibit. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here today. Yes, today on this exact day, 52 years ago, the original 1966 Batman television program premiered. And right here off the boulevard, they are gonna be showing their affection for that classic television series. They're getting ready for the crowds. And as you make your way in the door, you're greeted with these two brochures of large form explaining who George Barris was, the originator, the creator of the Batmobile. And as you turn around, the first ever Batman 66 exhibit. Holy Hollywood history, Batman. To the bat exhibit. The original car was built from a $250,000 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura concept car that was sold to him for a total of $1 because he was a part of the Ford Custom Caravan program. One buck. It costs you a little more than that today by today's pricing. Spoiler alert, we're not going into a cave. In fact, we're not going downward at all. We're walking upstairs, which is a little misleading. I thought the cave, was the cave underground? I made it to the top and take a look at this. Wow, much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And most of it is completely enclosed in glass. They're protecting it very well. On January 12th, 1966, the world of popular culture was forever changed when millions of people all over the world tuned into ABC TV to see the television debut of Batman. For the first time ever, Bat fans and collectors from all over the world have converged on this location for a never before seen conglomeration of Cape Crusader collectibles. It might be hard to tell, but this poster is very puffy of 3D-like proportions. And here's some toys and costumes. A lot of good stuff adorning this case. Yes, those are, those are roller skates down there. And the utility belt. Always wanted one of those. Old school metal lunchbox, I see in there as well. A few signatures have been placed upon this item. Oh, wow. Look at his face. I believe you're supposed to hold that up to a light or the sun and it beams through either his chest or maybe his face, but look at his face. What's wrong with his face? And I'm not gonna lie, I would love to own this item. He zooms, soars, and loops through the air. It looks as if his hands are holding a string. You tie it on one side of the room, and you just slide him across. Man, that's, that's pretty awesome. A lot of the items in here are screen used, but some of them, like these costumes, are in fact replicas, as stated here screen accurate replicas and they state that the dye in the fabric would fade out and unfortunately the elements that gave the stretchy fabric its sheen didn't take to the dye very well so over time a lot of those original costumes no longer exist some of them do but only a few they have given us this diagram with numbers next to each costume letting us know the character it portrays and the actor that played the particular role. Study it closely. There might be a test later. Well, not really. There, there, there won't be a test. Tucked away in the back is old False Face. That was the name, False Face. Wearing a veil and shades. Hidden in the shrouds of darkness. Well, kind of, there's a light on. As I mentioned a moment ago, some stuff is real and some recreations. This penguin's nest sign was used in the second season episode titled appropriately, The Penguin's Nest. 
that this Big Ben Distillery dehydrator, that is a screen accurate replica. A couple different display cases featuring some more items. Oh, old color forms. I remember these, they were like magnets. You would take the different body parts. Ooh, there's the penguin down there. And you would place them in front of Gotham City. The bat phone. Some of this stuff brings back a lot of memories. I was not alive in the 60s. I was not born until the mid 70s. But I did watch a lot of the reruns. Ooh. Flicker rings. Things have definitely changed over the years when it comes to this series. When you look at Batman today, only a few of us think of this era. But those that do look back with lots of fondness. Here's a script signed by the cast. It all started, it all started here, folks. Yvonne Craig, who played Batgirl, her chair is sitting right next to the Bat radar scope. Both of those relics of the show. She would sit in that particular chair, get her makeup done before she went on set to perform her scenes. And this item was located in the Bat Cave, right there. The Bat radar scope. That comes in handy when you're fighting crime. Watch out, fellas. There is a bomb at your feet. There's a bomb. Oh, never mind. They're protected. Their legs are safe and sound. Just to give a little comparison in the background, those two figures are recreations. The ones in front were off the show. And you can tell because they are much less colorful. Time has faded out the fabric and they're tattered and considerably torn. If you look closely, the tip of his nose is worn down to the nub. That's the original bat emblem on his torso, right there in the arm piece. A little bit of a tear from one of those famous Burt Ward flips he was so well known for. It's probably a good thing this isn't the real car. Because if I was standing behind the, the real one, I would be getting scorched because flames would emit out the rear end, out the backside, making this thing get up to incredible speeds. However, in case of an emergency, I guess I could always just grab the bat extinguisher. Whew. That would come in, come in very handy. Now, I couldn't find any information on it as far as a card with details, but I do think that's the original motorcycle there with the sidecar, just judging by the painting and the lettering and the age. If I was a betting man, I'd say that that was in an episode or two. If you needed help, just tilt Shakespeare's head back, and before you know it, the Cape Crusader and his partner would slide down those poles and come to the rescue. The rogues gallery of villains is just dangling here in the center of the museum. The most famous villains do not even need to be introduced because they were in most of the episodes. But there were a lot of other celebrity guest stars that made appearances over the years as pictured here. And there's Vincent Price again on the far left and a list of some of the more famous best special guest villains. And who could forget the Batcopter? That descriptive plaque used to be mounted on board as was this propeller which has now been signed by most of the cast. The red bat phone was used in an episode, as was the communicator bat buckle. But next to it is just a replica bat communicator next to a screen used purple bat girl walkie talkie, and then another replica. Who can forget the shark repellent? So they have the replicas and the actual screen used stuff 
all mixed together. So you have to read the little place cards because it gets it gets very, very confusing. And I must say, it is good that these items are behind protective glass because if you put that on your noggin, the Joker will use them to drain your surfing ability. This can be seen in two separate season one episodes. The first titled The Joker, and the second was called He Meets His Match, The Grizzly Ghoul. That's a long, that's a long name for an episode. But that outfit could be seen in both of them. Surprisingly, even though this is the first day it's open, there's not a whole heck of a lot of people in here. I might have been the first one. Oh, hey, Adam. Did you see the Batman exhibit? I just finished. Foiled again. Some of the stuff I wish they still made, like Slam Bang Vanilla. It had banana marshmallows. It's ice cream. I would consume a, a pint or two of that and I would I'm not a big fan of lemon drink but if it's got that guy on the front of it I would pour myself a heaping cool glass even marbles they had all kind of paraphernalia anything that you could shake a stick at they really did have some great characters like the bookworm with his magnifying glass and light off the brim of his cap. And then off to the right a little bit is the Mad Hatter. Be careful, he's got eyes on top of his head protruding from his top cap. Back before we could just look on our cell phone to tell what date it was, he needed a calendar. And why not have one with the bat emblem? Or Batman himself just teetering over the date stamp. And remember, if you've learned anything today, brush each day with teeny tiny... Whoa, Robin, he is, uh... Robin's been working out. He's buffer than the Cape Crusader. Look at these guys. You place your hand up inside their body, this thin plastic sheet with the harder plastic bobblehead up on top. Puppets. Now, I personally was not, but I have to wonder, was anyone watching this a part of the society? Were you a charter member that owned one of these buttons? And if you were a charter member, were you able to have the death-defying feat of holding a venomous snake in your hand? Probably not. That probably didn't. That probably didn't come with the the benefit package. Anytime there was a fight scene, they used this dialogue. Dozens and dozens of words like bloop and blurp and clang and ug and whack and wham and kapow. So many words to signify a punch thrown and making contact. Crack. it from the Hollywood Museum on the corner of Hollywood Boulevard and Highland. Although this exhibit started today, it does run through March 7th. you retired, man? What are you doing? Shh. I've recently joined Instagram again as well. My Instagram name is Adam the Woo, AT Jones, that distracted me. And social media, Facebook, backslash the Daily Woo. I'll put links down below. I will see you guys in the next video vlog.